Hello and welcome to the latest edition of Level Up, unless there's been another one by the time you watch this. I'm Tim Morgan and in this Level Up I'll be reviewing Marvel vs Capcom 3. Now I'm a big fan of Marvel and Capcom games, so I was quite looking forward to playing this. I even had a chance to play the game before it came out at the MCM Expo. The most dramatic change in this game is a jump from the anime style 2D to the cell shaded 3D. I've always been more of a fan of the 2D style when it comes to these types of games, but I think this game has managed to put it off okay. For starters, let's take a look at some of the new characters. I was happy to see some great additions in Deadpool and Dante, and Arthur is a unique character, along with Amatoro. I'm not too sure how Dormammu or Mordok made into the lineup though. I should probably stop there and advise the critique in this review assumes you're familiar with Marvel and Capcom characters. Here are some people I would have liked to have seen. M. Bison and Ken. I know there are already a few Street Fighter characters in the game, but these guys deserve to be in the roster too. Doctor Strange. He could have had an awesome moveset. He is mentioned in one of the endings, but is not playable as a character. Same goes for Mega Man too. And I would have liked to have seen Venom kept in the game, as well as Cyclops. I could keep going because there's so many great characters to consider, which again raises the question why is Mordok in the game? In terms of gameplay, this game is fantastic. There are loads of different moves and ways to tactically use your super combo bar. Firstly, the obvious to use a super combo move, but also to store up three bars and utilise all three characters of your team at once. Or for some characters, you can launch a devastating attack worth three super combo gauges. My favourite super combo is Deadpool's fourth wall breakdown. This gauge can also be used for knocking characters out of play and performing crossover counters. Beginners can choose simple controls when the strong medium hard button progression is replaced by normal, special and super combo. This helps turn a specialist game into a pick up and play free for all for all gamers of any skill level. Using normal controls allows you to perform all characters moves rather than just a few sample moves from the simple controls, but you have to be able to pull off the input commands. The storyline's a bit flaky. The fact that there's characters from two different universes existing in the same space, suggesting that the fabric of space is coming apart, was apparently a weak storyline. So it's pretty much ignored, and everyone turns their attention to Galactus, who happens to turn up. Now, you see, I thought it would have been better to have someone like, say, Apocalypse, trying to transcend dimensions, and all the heroes trying to stop him, and all the villains trying to steal his technology for themselves. But there you go. Once you clear the game, you get a rather naff summary of what happens next to that character, unlocking artwork and character models. I would have thought we were past the point of having to unlock a load of sound samples for this type of game. I suppose it's content for the sake of content. There's no real desire to unlock the picture of Taskmaster, apart from achievement points of course. While playing through the game, I noticed the option for mission mode. Ah, I thought. Mission mode, you say? Time attacks, survival, defeating waves of enemies, super combo only challenges? I guess I was expecting a world tour mode, similar to Street Fighter Alpha 3, where different levels have varying criteria of what you need to do to clear the level. But no, mission mode is actually this. Start. <sighs> so, the next area to look into is the online mode. Although online modes are always a plus, I find with fighting games there's always people better than you ready to kick your ass. The player progression and stat monitoring is good, helping you keep track of how well you're doing. Well, I'm going to give Marvel vs Capcom 3 an 8 out of 10. It's a really good, fast-paced, action-packed fighting game. It's just a little bit light on features and modes. I'm going to be doing something slightly different in Level Up, and rather than having a viewer's score, I'm going to have a general question. The question for this episode is going to be, who do you think makes better games, Marvel or Capcom? For now though, let's see your comments from the Spare Parts review.
Well, I'm Tim Morgan, and this level's complete.